Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we will learn how to detect any object using cascade method. Initially, we will look into how to run a pre-trained model such as face and full body that is provided by OpenCV. Then we will learn how to create a cascade by collecting our own data by just using a webcam. I have written a script that will allow us to get lots of data while filtering it out so that we only collect good data in just a matter of minutes. Then we will train this data to create the cascade and deploy it to see our final result. I will also be sharing the customizable parameters required during the training process so that you can get the best results. I upload videos on a weekly basis, so don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you would like to see more. So let's get started. So let's first look into the overall concept. Let's say we want to detect cars. So we will collect a lot of data, a lot of images of car, and we will put them in a folder called positives. Now we will also collect a lot of negative data, which are the things that are related to cars, but are not actually cars. So for example, uh, the road, the traffic signs, uh, the signal, uh, the traffic cone, a lot of the things that are related to cars, and uh, that could help us classify the difference between cars and um, other other objects. Then we will take these two folders and we will train using these images. And from this training, we will get a file which will be our cascade file. Now this cascade file will help us determine whether a given image uh, has a car inside of it or not. And if it is, where is the car present? <clears throat> so let's have a look at the pre-trained models first where we have the XML files provided by OpenCV. So one of the most famous ones is the uh, frontal face by default, which is right here. So all these cascades are provided by OpenCV uh, by default. So you can use any of these. So you have for uh, face, you have for full body, for eye, for even plate detection. So we can use any of these using uh, this uh, few lines of code and we can optimize it a little bit using some parameters. So let's see how it runs. So let's run it first. So I have a uh, image uh, with a lot of faces in it and you can see through my webcam now we have some parameters that we can change you can see the result is not that great so we have this scale so as you can see by changing uh, the value of the scale my detection improves but as I go lower you can see um, the the rate of change or the frame rate decreases so it, it requires more computational power. And uh, here we can reduce the minimum neighbor as well. And uh, so we, we, we can tweak it around until we get some uh, good results. And we also have the brightness value that we can change around of the camera if we want more clarity um, in terms of brightness. So <clears throat> using, using this uh, code, you can actually run any of the uh, pre-trained uh, cascades and you can tweak these values to actually get the optimal results. So let's see how this actually works. So at the top here, we have the path of the cascade. So I have a folder called Har Cascades and inside this folder, I have all these cascades uh, that I'm using. So I can just write the name of the one I want and then it will run that. And this is the name that it will show at the top of the bounding box. Um, as the object name and uh, most of these are pretty common <coughs> excuse me um, and then we have the camera parameters and then these are the parameters for initializing the trackbar uh, through which we are controlling our different parameters and here is the main part where we are loading our cascade so by using our default uh, path, we will load our cascade and then we are going to use it down here to detect uh, our objects within uh, this image. 
this image is defined by um, the image that we are getting from our camera so we are converting it first into grayscale which we are doing here so this is our camera uh, reading the image and this is where we are converting it into grayscale and then these these things are for the track bar again these, this is for track bar you don't need to worry about that now what is the scale and what is the minimum neighbor now um, w without going into too much detail if you have a lower scale value uh, your computational power will be uh, required will be more but you will get better results and uh, if if you have a lower minimum neighbor then um, you will have much more detection but you might have false detection as well so if you want to make it harder to detect you increase the value of minimum neighbors and then here we are getting into the for loop where we are actually detecting the objects um, and then um, uh, sorry not detecting the objects we are actually displaying the objects and uh, we are creating a bounding box which is a rectangle around them uh, we are getting the x y and width and height of the object we have detected and uh, before we go into uh, printing it out we are checking the area if it meets our minimum criteria so we don't want to track very small things so that's why we have a minimum area again this is available in the track bar to move around so this is how uh, simple it is to actually run a pre-trained model so <clears throat> now now the the bigger picture is how to get your data ready and how to create your own cascade So to collect the data, we have multiple ways. One of them is to search online on Google and you can Google whatever you need and you can go to its images and here you will find quite a lot of resources where you can collect your data from. So if you want to download all of these together, you can use the FATCON extension in Chrome and you can download all of them at once. So this can give you uh, a good amount of data all at once now the other method is by collecting using a webcam now let's get into that so here is our script for collecting our data using webcam so initially we define our path where we want to save our uh, images and then we define a few more parameters for example uh, we don't want to take every frame and save it so we will say we want to save every 10th frame or for example every 20th frame and then we also have a um, threshold for blurriness we don't want uh, too much blurriness in our images because that will um, affect the training process so we have a minimum threshold that if it's uh, too blurry we don't want to save that image we also can save the images in grayscale and uh, then we have the parameter we have the flag for actually testing so if you don't want to save the data you can uh, put this as false and set up your camera and then you can start uh, make it true and start it and then the, uh, this is the final width and height that the image will be saved in now every time it will create a new folder so you don't have to worry about overwriting your images so whatever you collect will be added in a new folder it will see how many folders it has already and then it will add on um, a new folder and then here is our actual um, while loop the main loop that will run and save our images and it will uh, put a timestamp and it will uh, also add the blurriness value in the image so that um, if, if you put just numbers it will uh, all the images will have um, same same names so you want to add the timestamp and the blurriness in order to check as well later on um, what kind of blurriness values are we getting so you can run this code and it will simply start collecting data so let's see what happens so here we have our object detection har folder so it should create a folder inside of this by the name data and inside that we should have our images so i have set up the camera so let's run this and see what happens oh it's running the previous one let's run this So here it has started collecting the data and if I move it around, if I move my camera around, I can, I can take different angles. So if I do this, it will not save uh, because the blurriness will be too high. It will not save the images. 
so let's stop it and see what we have so here is our data folder we can open it we have images zero now inside images zero we have all these images that we collected so we went on for a few seconds but we have only a few images and the reason for that is because we are we are filtering our data so let's see what we have inside so these are the images that we have so we don't have the images in the start and we don't have the images at the end so that's a good sign so and you can see here we have uh, the blurriness value so here 908 603 this is the blurriness value which we have the threshold at 500 so if it's below 500 it will not accept if it's above 500 it will accept so the the higher the number the more sharper it is the sharper it is so and after that we have our timestamp so all these images are collected and good to go now if if i run it again of course it will create um this time around let's go back uh, let's say i want to collect it again so again it will create a new folder images one and then it will save the data in that so we are going to collect the positive data first for collecting the data you want to make sure that you have a good amount of light and you are collecting uh, most of the object within the image so this is uh, true for positive images now you want to keep your hand steady and you want to move in uh, in intervals so that you can collect steady uh, images which are sharp for the negative images the process is quite similar here we collect images of objects that would normally surround your desired object it is advisable to have more negative images at least 1.5 to 2 times more so once we have collected the data we will open up our folders of positive and negative images we will look around and try to find any irregularities any images that stand out that are not part of the collection process so we will delete those and then we will create a new folder for positives and negatives and we will copy all of our images into these new folders now this will be um, used in our graphical interface so next we are going to open up our cascade trainer and we will select our folder in which we have the positives and negatives now one thing that we need to know is how many positives and negatives we have because the negatives we are going to enter in our training value so here you can see i have 145 negative images then we are going to change the number of stages to 15 and the sample width to 36 then we will start the training process the rest of the parameters we can change but for the simplicity of it we will keep them as default so i had used about 100 images of positives and 145 images of negative and uh, the process took about two minutes to create a cascade so once completed we are going to go back to our main folder and we will have a new cascade file that we will copy and paste it in our har cascade folder and uh, we are going to rename it to har cascade slash arduino underscore arduino and we will change it in our path as well and then we are going to simply run so as you can see here we are able to detect arduino uh, but the the flickering is quite a bit so we are going to change our scale parameter and we are going to change our minimum neighbor and we will tweak the brightness a little bit to get the optimum results now again this is just by training of two minutes and a few hundred images so you will not get a lot of accuracy but you will get a journal idea of how these cascades are made and how you can train your own so for better results you should uh, get a lot of data and you should train it furthermore rather than just a few minutes so this brings us to the end of the tutorial if you have any questions leave it in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you are new to the channel